Everybody, this is Draymond. It's going to be a WNBA slate at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and this slate features two games and Seattle, Atlanta, and then Las Vegas and Los Angeles. Um, this slate is pretty interesting as both games do have some high risk of blowout. Uh, the Las Vegas, Los Angeles game has Las Vegas as a plus, as a minus 13 and a half. And Atlanta is favored over Seattle at minus 8. Both games are expected to have about 170 point totals. So uh, that's interesting for this slate, especially with all four teams uh, being decent in pace uh, with the Atlanta-Seattle te- game being slightly better from that perspective. Um, with that said, let's get into the teams though. So Atlanta, uh, they do have uh, the fourth best offense, ninth best defense, and first in pace on the season. Reminder, it is a 12-team league. Uh, Seattle, meanwhile, is 12th in offense, 10th in defense, and 4th in pace. Uh, Then we'll look at um, Las Vegas, who is 1st in offense and defense, and 3rd in pace. Uh, And then Los Angeles is 10th in offense, 6th in defense, and 8th in pace. I do expect Las Vegas to win that game pretty easily. Uh, They trashed Los Angeles twice already this season, so I expect similar results. Um, As for... Uh, Atlanta and Seattle. I do think Atlanta wins this game relatively easy, but it should be a little bit higher scoring than most Seattle games. And that actually gives Seattle some upside because they have uh, some cheaper, like they're a little bit cheaper than some of the, if they were, if their players were on other teams. So uh, with that said, let's get into the slate though here. We're going to go ahead and start with our forwards. Um, and we're going to start with AG, AJ Wilson here for the Las Vegas now, she needs over 37 fantasy points to pay off, but as you can see, she's averaging 41. She's capable of double-doubles every game. She missed by two rebounds yesterday, but her minutes are a bit lower when the blowouts happen, which is likely today. That said, her floor is in the 30s, so it's not a huge risk for expensive play and a good matchup. Uh, then we'll look at uh, uh, Nikki Ogwumi. Mike, I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, she's about the same price as Wilson, and she's been over 36 fantasy points, which is what she needs, in 14 of 18 games this season. While the matchup isn't nearly as ideal as as I'd like it to be, she is capable here, though her one, one of her few bad games was versus Las Vegas early this year, so that is a concern, but she definitely has the capability of being successful here. Uh, then we'll look at Ezzy, uh Let's see. Then we'll look at Ezzy, uh Magberger. Uh, Again, sorry for butchering her names. Uh, she needs 33 fantasy points to pay off here. Um, now, she's been over that in 11 to 19 games this season. She's also got a high floor as she's not been under 25 fantasy points, but a couple of times throughout the season. Uh, she has really good upside here, and as you can see, her fantasy points per game is right at what she needs as well. So, she's definitely viable here. Um, then we'll look at Cheyenne Parker for Atlanta. Now, she's a little bit lower floor than most of the other forwards, but she's also got as much side as upside is as he does and she's a good option in a plus matchup what that's where she's favored to win and they're on a five game winning streak which she's played well in in three of those games she's been over 38 fantasy points uh, which would definitely pay off here um moving into our uh guards uh, we're going to start with our two uh, um core plays uh with alicia gray for atlanta she's a bit underpriced for up to- upside but she does need she just needs 30 fantasy points to pay off here. She's a little bit cheaper than Parker, too, for a utility spot. And she has five straight wins, and she's been a factor in all of them, including a thir- 39 fantasy points in three of them. Very similar to Parker in that aspect. Though her her, ceiling, her floor is a little bit higher than Parker's is. Um, then we'll look at uh, Chelsea Gray for Las Vegas. She just needs 31 fantasy points to pay off here, and she's a little bit underpriced. Uh, she's been smashing most of the season, and she does get a boost here with Parker out as well. Uh, and she's got the best boost of anyone on Las Vegas. She is a core play on the slate by a lot. I really like her quite a bit. Then we'll get our other guards here. We'll look at Joy- Jewel Lloyd for Seattle. She's been up and down recently, but she has much upside as anyone on the slate. She does need 36 fantasy points to pay off her, but her floor is in the mid-20s, and her ceiling is over 50, which gives her a lot of upside. Uh, and then we'll look at Howard for Atlanta at at $10,200, her ceiling has been met twice in four games. While she does need 35 fantasy points to pay off, she's been close to that in most of her games. Though she has some inconsistent scoring games, she does get rebounds and assists at a decent clip. And her ceiling is about as high as anybody's on the slate as she's had two 55-plus games the last four games. Um, then we'll look at uh, Kelsey Plum 
uh, for Las Vegas. Now, she's a little bit more expensive than some of the other Vegas players, um, but she definitely has some nice upside today, as she does need 34 fantasy points to pay off. She's been above that two in the last three, and she gets a boost with Parker out as well. She's a great play on the slate. Um, then we'll look at Jackie Young, who is very similar price to Gray. Now, her ceiling is just as good, but her floor is a little bit lower. Uh, but she definitely has some utility here, and she also gets a boost with Parker being out. Uh, she should get in the 30-minute in the window as well, which is definitely nice, as Las Vegas does play a very tight group when it comes to their starters. Uh, then we'll look at Canada for Las Vegas. Or sorry, with, for Los Angeles, rather. Now, she is a little bit cheaper at just $8,300, and she needs 29 fantasy points to pay off here. While I don't see the 50 fantasy point upside, she has been in the 27 to 35 range for most of the season, which gives her a lot of safety and a price that helps you a lot today to pay up for other options. Uh, so I definitely think she's viable. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky today. We have some value plays for you, but everybody in the value plays are very risky and high, a little bit overpriced, but... Uh, you're going to have to pay down for a couple players, so these are the people, uh, the women I think have the most upside. Uh, we're going to start with Kia Stokes for Las Vegas. Uh, now, she's starting for Parker being out, and as long as that's her role, she has enough upside to be viable at this price. But she is a little bit priced out, just barely at the top of the price range that I would want to utilize her at. Because she's probably got a cap of around 25 fantasy points when she's got when she's got plenty of minutes. Uh, I do like her upside in this matchup, though, so she's definitely capable of having a good game here. Uh, but, you know, she does have some risk, though she does get some blocks and rebounds, which definitely helps. Uh, then we're going to look at Dulce uh, from Seattle. Now, she has not played much throughout the season except for the last few games. Uh, in the last five games, she's finally, those are the first five games this year that she's been over 15 minutes. And in the last two, she's actually started, and she ends up with two double-doubles. Uh, with her playing that well, she's worth a look here, as she's nice and cheap still, though her price has come up quite a bit as a result. Um, she's played, she started two games this season, played 30 minutes in both, and scored over 30 fantasy points in both, and she only needs 19 fantasy points to pay off at this price, so she's definitely a top-tier option as a value play, but she does carry risk, because she may ha change her role. Uh, then we'll look at Carly Samuelson for Los Angeles. Now, she is very risky today, and she's... But she might draw the start today after sitting out a game uh, due to injury. She's been somewhat inconsistent as a starter. Uh, but she does have some upside, and she does manage to get at least into double figures in the fancy point range most of the time. Uh, now, her price is also not ideal, but it came down a little bit due to her injuries. Uh, but she does have good utility, as she should get some decent minutes. Uh, but she does feel risky today. And then we'll look at Ray Burrell for Los Angeles as well. Now, she's dirt cheap, and she only needs 14 fantasy points to pay off. Now, she's only done that once throughout the season, but she has had a bigger role the last three games and gotten at least 10 fantasy points in two of those three games. And so that does give her some utility here, though she is in a tough matchup in the high-risk situation. But she does draw like, some interesting opportunity as she's near minimum price. So... With that said, guys, that's what I have for the slate. I think it's a pretty interesting slate, despite it only being two games. Uh, it definitely has some upside here. So thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys.